Hey there, I am back with another deck review, and today we're going to be looking at the Primordial playing cards from Costa Pantazis and Charles Adi over at Blackout Brothers. Now, Blackout Brothers have done another, like this one, Greek-themed deck in the Hercules deck, but in this one they wanted to explore a subject that they kind of felt was an underserved part of Greek mythology. A lot of decks have been done for the classical Greek stories, including Hercules or the stories of Zeus and Poseidon and all of the other Greek gods that you've heard, but there are actually three different generations of the Greek gods. There's the ones that most people have heard of, uh, led by Zeus, are actually the third generation, but going back you have the Titans before them, and then before them even at the beginning of the earth were the Primordials. The Primordials were the original gods, uh, they're usually not represented in a human form. They're a little bit more foundational to creation. Uh, but here, they're kind of brought to life as the court cards within this deck. Uh, this is a 2019 Kickstarter campaign. Uh, there are a few different versions of this deck. So I've got two of them here. I've got the Ether version and the Chaos version here in the dark. Uh, so both are limited to 2,000. Uh, and were part of that successful Kickstarter campaign. I'm going to spend most of the time looking at the Ether deck, and then we'll look really quickly at the end at the Chaos deck just so you can see the differences. They're very similar, uh, just kind of a different coloration. So starting here with the Tuck case. Uh, so it says Primordial at the top in this beautiful gold foil, so it's all hot stamped gold foil. And then here in the center you have a representation of Chaos. Uh, chaos when represented as a human, is represented as a female, and chaos is basically the dark void from which the earth was formed. Uh, so that dark, kind of formless void. Um, so you have chaos there in the center, represented as a woman, and then you have a circular base uh, kind of border here with just tons of design work all the way around and lots of different bits of symbology all the way through. You have down here what are kind of phases of the moon. You have this, uh, this ball here with an eye in the middle, kind of cradled by a bird here. You also have here in the corners, so these triangles kind of represent alchemical symbols. Uh, so looking in the four corners, you have earth and its counterpart down here, air, and then fire up here in the top and water down here in the bottom. So just different alchemical symbols uh, representing the four classic elements. And then on the sides here, you have a snake wrapped around a ball. A little bit of a representation, we'll see this repeat a few times in here, of the Orphic egg or the world egg, which is essentially the earth wrapped by one of the gods represented as, or one of the primordial beings represented as that snake. So there it is, beautifully done. Uh, you have kind of this reddish color around the border, a lot of off-white, and then tons of that gold foil stamping. There's some very, very slight embossing. It's not the majority of it. Uh, but in some of these areas, you'll get a little bit of embossing like here around the eggs, for example. So there's a very light embossing that goes around here as well. Uh, continuing the sides, one side it says Master Finish, made in the USA. So this bicycle with their Master Finish. And then Primordial Playing Cards and that gold foil again on the other side. Bottom just has some pretty standard ad copy for Costa, Blackout Brothers, and USBCC. And then the top says in bold font, Primordial uh, with that kind of gold foil surrounding it. Very nice there. On the back, you have a colorized version of the back of the cards. We'll talk a little bit more about some of the details when we look at the backs of the cards. Uh, and then you also have a stamp, uh, custom tuck seal here. So it says Primordial at the top, has that I logo, and then it is numbered, as I mentioned, out of 2000. So there you go. That is the tuck case on the outside. On the inside, you get a few more gold details. So here you have that winged element here as well as spade pips on the inside. And then you have full printing down the tuck case as well. There's primordial very boldly there, and then has that world egg or the Orphic egg represented again in this repeating pattern. You can see those intertwined snakes all the way down. So really beautiful printing on the inside of the tuck case, almost forming, almost like a paisley pattern, I think it kind of reminds me of. So very nice, like when they do uh, printing on the interior of the tuck case. Let's look at the cards. So first off, here is the back design. So the most prominent feature is going to be that Orphic egg, the two intertwined snakes wrapped around an egg that you kind of can't see as they're coiled around it. Uh, those snakes represent a couple of the gods. So it's Kronos, the god of time, and Ananke, the goddess of inevitability. And they're said to be represented as 
serpentine figures that are wrapping themselves around the earth. And so that's what you see represented here. They're cradled in the wings of this bird. And then you have tons of flourishes and symbols surrounding them. So you get everything from this kind of Greek style patterning going here. You get waves coming at the top and then you even have kind of laurel branches uh, representing some of those frames there. So lots of little stylized details all the way through there. And then you have more symbology in the corners and the edges here with the eyes, as well as those alchemic symbols uh, in the corners. Uh, it's a bit of a fatter white poker border around the edge, but it's also broken up by some of the elements of the design in the center. So I think while I don't love really fat white borders, I like that it's broken up there. Kind of keeps it with an interesting shape and interesting look to it. So there you go, that's the back design of the cards. Uh, you do get a couple of gaff cards. You get one double backer and one blank face card. So keeping it a little bit more functional there. Uh, the jokers here. So here are your two jokers. They're not identical. They both represent the same being though. So this represents Tecmor, who is related with the end and limit of life. Uh, both represented here. You can get a feel for the kind of comics, comic art style that you're gonna see with these. Uh, with the beautiful blue hair there and the representation in kind of two different forms. And then you have her with the gold frame all the way around with the snakes. And then you have this kind of watermark in the back and you can see the uh, those alchemic symbols poking out there. You have one that's the black joker and one that's the red joker. The black's actually more of a brown color. Hopefully that shows up all right. And you have a really bright color for the red. So there's your two jokers. Now, looking next at the aces. So the aces represent the Moirai, or the fates. Uh, the fates are the ones who kind of determine the path of life. They're represented as a trio of sisters. So the first, the ace of spades, is really just kind of their symbol. And then the other three aces represent the fates themselves. So you'll see here the enlarged spade pip in the middle. You've got that watermark background again uh, behind it. And then you have the black or brown kind of custom spade pip with the ace index in the corner. Uh, and as you look at this, you kind of see some of the design elements. You have, you know, the hourglass representing our fate and our time. You have the four flowers at the bottom. So really beautiful design on the ace of spades, but it continues with the other three aces as well. So these represent the three fates and they are represented, uh, life is represented kind of as their thread. And so they have the three fates. So the first one, the ace of hearts here is Clotho. Uh, she's the spinner, the one who spins or creates the thread, so creates that life. Ace of clubs right here is La Chisis, the allotter, the one who measures out the thread as you go through your life. And then last but not least is Etropos, the inevitable, and she's the one who ultimately cuts the thread, ending your life. So there's the three fates. Very cool representation in that as those three sisters. Uh, really quickly going through the number cards. You'll see they're, they're fairly standard layout on the pips, but they're all gonna be full custom. So you're gonna get these kind of flourishes in the middle. So here's the spade pips, first of all, and then you have this swirling pattern kind of forming a really light background here, kind of done in metallic inks in the back. So really beautiful uh, framing up those spade pips. And then they're gonna be in somewhat normal, maybe a little bit more clustered uh, layouts there as you go through. So there are your spade pips. Your red ones are gonna be more of the same. Uh, obviously they're gonna be red instead of that brown color, uh, but same layouts. And these also have kind of a custom design almost with a flower there in the center. You can go really quickly through those. And then there's your clubs, representing almost as puffs or as clouds. And then your hearts as you run through. So there are those. Now we're gonna spend a little bit of time looking at the court cards. The court cards are the ones that actually represent 12 of the primordial beings. So the, here are the hearts. So these represent Eros, who represents love, Gaia of the earth, and Uranus, uh, who represented the heavens and was the ruler of all of the other uh, primordial beings. So there are those. And on each one of these, you'll see it's not uh, it's not a symmetrical design, right? So you have two different faces of the same being, right? So as I look at Eros here, you've got on one side and then on the other, kind of with a different pose. So representing a couple of different looks of that being. 
uh, beautifully done with this kind of skull design with a snake coming through. So really, really beautiful. And then the flowers here kind of giving a little bit more of that representation of love that you get from Eros. Uh, there's Gaia, you know, with the green and the flowers, you can see the planet Earth kind of represented in the back. And then as you flip it around, you get a slightly different pose. So not dramatically different, but subtly different as you go through on the different poses, which I think is kind of a nice touch, kind of makes it makes it interesting. It's still, you know, symmetrical enough that like if it's flipped around, it's not going to be distracting or anything, but really like that. Uh, here are your spades. So for the spades, you have Orea. Uh, these are the uh, primordial beings that represent the mountains. I like this one with the uh, waterfall on the other side. Uh, the queen of spades here is Ananke, goddess of uh, uh, the primordial of inevitability, also the mother of the fates, and one of those snakes that's wrapped around the world egg. And then the king is the other snake wrapped around the world egg, Kronos, representing time, which you can see really clearly through the hourglass on one side. Here's the diamonds. So you have the Jack of Diamonds, who is Ether, uh, the namesake of the deck, and represents the upper air of the heavens. Himera, who represents the day. And then Pontos of the sea. I like this one a lot with, you know, you got the tentacles coming out, you have the crab legs coming a little bit out of his hair, and then of course the classic trident. And then here are your clubs. So the Jack of Clubs is Tartarus, the anti-heaven, kind of the pits that are below the earth. And this is ultimately where the Titans end up being trapped after they war with the Olympians in much later Greek mythology. Uh, the queen of clubs is Nyx, N-Y-X. Uh, she represents the knight. Uh, despite kind of her, her look, she was actually one of the most feared gods and was said to, or uh, feared primordial beings and was said to be one of the only, uh, one of the only all powerful beings that Zeus feared was Nyx, actually, interestingly. And then here's Erebus, who represents darkness. Uh, another really striking picture here. I uh, love that kind of wizened look on him uh, with that swirling gray all over. So there are your court cards. Now uh, taking a really quick look, I'm gonna try to go a lot faster through this one. Here's the Chaos deck. So the Chaos deck is very similar in style, but it's gonna be completely recolored in this black and red. So all the gold foil has been replaced with red foil, and you have much darker themes as you go through. So really nice. The tuck seal now is going to be red, and the interior printing is going to be a much brighter red. And as you pull out the deck, it's going to be a black card back instead of a red. So here's your back design. So it's going to be now a black card design with a really striking red look to it. Like the look, those black backs obviously have a little bit of a tendency to kind of chip at the edges, but a really nice, really striking look. And then you have the black faces to the cards as well. All those... Uh, designs like the uh, jokers and the court cards they're gonna be the same basic drawing but they're gonna be done up in a different uh, in a different coloring right so here's the two side by side right so you have one with the blue hair one with the red hair but it's basically the same drawing and that's gonna continue as you go through all of these so just really quick flip to give you a little bit of a look at them so now here the black cards are gonna be represent, represented with white pips with kind of that gray background look or kind of silvery and then as you go through, all of these get a little bit of a coloring, have a little bit of a darker, more sinister theme to them, almost within the Chaos deck. So even with that similar art style, that just recoloring can give everybody a much more sinister and almost evil look to them, which I think is an interesting, interesting play there. That's a particularly dramatic one with the flames really showing up. And then there's your red. So the reds are still gonna be represented by that same red color. And there you go. Uh, one small nit on this. I don't love that they did the blank face card in white. I think that's incredibly distracting with a black deck to have one card with a white face. But I understand, you know, if a spectator is going to use this in Magic and sign it, I'm going to want it to be white. Uh, as far as handling, they are a bicycle with the master finish. They're going to handle really, really nicely. So they're going to fan beautifully. Just enough of a design element there to kind of show up really well in the fans. So fans, cuts, everything are going to handle well. Uh, as far as uses for this deck, uh, primarily I think it's going to be an art deck. Uh, a lot of that artwork is really beautiful, really nice to look at, uh, but also potentially distracting if you're going to use this, particularly for something like magic or gameplay. Uh, you want something probably with a little bit more of a standard face. You probably could use this as a, as a pretty 
easy to use uh, game deck. I will say, you know, it's definitely readable, no issues there. So you could use this for gameplay, but I think it's primarily gonna find its home as an art deck. So that's it, hope you enjoyed. Uh, hope you had a chance to pick some of these up for yourself. If not, I'm sure you'll be able to find them soon. Uh, but these are shipping out now as we speak. A few other versions of this deck that are kind of more limited. But hope you enjoyed this look at the uh, Ether and Chaos versions of Primordial. Uh, I think it's a really beautiful, striking deck. I'm a little bit of a sucker for Greek mythology and other mythologies. Uh, so this one really spoke to me. Uh, and I do kind of agree with their premise that it's a little bit of an underserved part of Greek mythology and looking at the primordial beings. So hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you have other questions, other decks you want to see. Uh, always looking for new ones to pick up and do reviews on the channel. And uh, with that, I will see you for the next one.